Network 18 that's in fact hunting for the next big innovative business idea. Pulse the Venture is uh, a series that's examining pre-revenue stage business ideas and the winner of the series gets to walk away with one crore rupees of seed funding. As part of this initiative, we are also interacting with a number of startup heroes of India and I'm joined by one of them today, Ritesh Agarwal, the founder and CEO of OYO. He's somebody who started his business at about 18 years of age, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yes, and today you're 23. 23, getting older by the day. Yes, and the valuation is over $850 million, I'm told, <laughs> today. Uh, uh, we, we don't talk about it. All right. <laughs> so that's in the public domain, and Ritesh is not going to talk about the valuation. But let me start with your entrepreneurial journey. You started out at 18 at a time when most of us are thinking of starting our college lives or are in, like, you know, first year of college. So what, you know, were you always a born entrepreneur, you would say? <laughs> No, so never, never born, honestly. But I think a couple of things. One, uh, you know, in today's generation, a lot of people have this excitement of saying that we want to do things which are um, really large and impactful. Right. Um, and probably um, a couple of generations back, um, there were not as many inspirations um, as well as opportunities to do it. Yeah. I grew up seeing a lot of young founders globally creating large impactful businesses. So I felt if the people outside across the world who can do it, so maybe I can try. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know whether it will happen. Uh, the second thing was um, also in our current generation, um, there's a lot of practicality around it. Yeah. For example, in our reservations, uh, there's one individual, you know, in a generation back, if you had gone and asked him that, what do you want to do 10 years out? His first view would have been, hey, probably I want to get a more senior job in a large organization. Yeah. Nowadays, when I go and meet my reservation partner, he tells me that, Ritesh, my long-term ambition is to build a company bigger than yours, right? So That's the ambitions right. of, um, you know, the, the, the current generation are a lot more. Yeah. And, you know, we are lucky to also live in a country where the prime minister of the country goes on television and says, why don't you, um, you know, get your kids to become job creators rather than job seekers? Yeah. So I think um, a combination of these things got me excited about all of this. The ecosystem uh, is very conducive. Right. There are a lot of these small startup events that happen where you see real people coming in and saying that this is a new thing I want to create. So all of this got me excited to say that I should definitely try. Right. Um, and one thing led to another for, for, for me to um, continue building OYO today. And how did the idea of OYO happen? Were you always uh, fascinated by the hospitality sector? So um, travel, yes. I think hospitality was incidental. Mm -hmm. um, it's very interesting. One of the things that people uh, don't understand mostly, and every entrepreneur seeing us would be uh, would would understand this, that effectively what you would have thought versus what you end up doing are actually always completely opposite. Like we initially, because you know you're always learning, right? You, right. Uh, the best thing about startups is you don't need to be able to organize everything on day one. You launch something, and your customers tell you these three things are things you should get better. Right. You take that feedback very fast, and you get better, right? We initially started with Oravel.com, yeah. which is more like Airbnb of India. We realized that the quality centricity on the supplier side, mm -hmm. the pricing con uh, you know, quality of what price are these rooms available for, yeah. uh, the quality of uh, check-in and check-out experience, all of these were fundamentally broken when you were just operating a non-controlled agent kind of a system. Right. So you felt a controlled, uh, audit-oriented, um, infrastructure investment-oriented system would ensure there is trust in the brand. And once there is trust in the brand, it will just work. Right. Um, and you know, we've been lucky over the last mm -hmm. couple of years for the love that we've got from, from so many uh, city dwellers and travelers who come in and stay with us. Right, absolutely. And uh, talking a little bit more about your early days, at 18, uh, you know, most uh, parents of children are thinking that they want some stable, non-risky careers for their kids. So for all the student entrepreneurs out there and the aspiring entrepreneurs who are really young, uh, is it advantageous to start young? And how do you really, uh, you know, mold your parents and align their thoughts to yours? So uh, I can only share for myself what happened uh, and then I'll also share what I suggest people to do because both of them are diametrically opposite. So um, my family uh, would stay um, in Odisha, which is where they still stay. Uh, and I had the opportunity post my 12th grade between university to be staying in Delhi. Yeah. So they didn't know it for a long time that I was actually doing all of these things. Uh, so I don't suggest that to be done, but that's how it started. But then when they realized that this was happening, um, I realized that 
long term i'll have to sell to a lot of people right i have to sell to our hotel partners our customers our vendors uh, the potential person who has to come on board right so if i have to sell to all of them i have to begin with my family so i had to convince them that it's a good idea yeah. so uh, i still remember that my logic was uh, a lot of kids in my age were taking one year of drop year between 12th grade uh, and university where they would yeah. say that they would prepare for competitive examinations or one of those things right. so uh, my view was look this is my one year mm-hmm. if i don't do well then i'd still go to university but uh, in this period if i am able to do well you know it just although i knew i didn't i never wanted to go back to university <laughs> so it was a tough one um uh, still remains tough actually even today when i am on the breakfast table uh, once in a while this conversation starts <laughs> and i have to be like not anymore <laughs> all right <laughs> but what i recommend uh, and this is something that uh, i learned after becoming a thiel fellow one of the things that's written in our contract uh, which are which are words that mark twain said once which is um, i will never let university interfere with my education mm. because education happens everywhere and right. i genuinely believe last few years of my learning Uh, I I couldn't have worked from any university. Far more than you yeah. would have yeah. uh, in an education. Just because I work with such smart people, I'm learning every day, which is way more than what I would get from academia uh, usually. Although academia has its own treats, which I probably mm-hmm. you know uh, will hopefully learn over time. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the expansion, recent expansion that you've been doing in countries outside of India. Oyo was present in Malaysia. Now you've recently set foot in Nepal. uh why nepal and what other emerging markets are you targeting sure um a few things right i think uh you know mostly um you know indian technology companies are uh thought of as uh companies or emulations of global companies we are very proud to have created something which is truly unique and innovative yeah. created first time in our country today there are more than 50 companies globally who are copying us as an outcome Uh, which i don't know to be unhappy or happy about <laughs> uh, but speaking more specifically about our views we believe that fundamentally south asia uh, has very similar problems like india right. uh, a large scale of unbranded units where the quality of experience is fundamentally missing and because there is no single large brand that uh, ensures uh, this is a demand side is also missing so we started with malaysia got great feedback and the business has been growing consistently there uh, we've had our share share of learnings there as well so we took those learnings and we saw that nepal was having a huge amount of travel from india mm. as well as from the southeast asian countries which were the two places we were existent in right uh, we've always been uh, of course great fans about uh, nepal as a country uh, which has uh, a combination of religious tourism because of Pashupati Nath, um, you know Mansarovar, and so on and so forth, has uh, backpacker travel because of a lot of Everest Space Camp and a lot of those things being there, and just a country where you know in the bucket list of so many more people. And we felt uh, it's one of our neighboring countries, so it will be uh, terrible if we didn't go to Nepal and 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 brought the economy of Nepal uh, right. into an organized system with Oyo. So that's and how's uh, the uptake been in Nepal? Uh, so we've been we've been running sold out or 85 90% occupancy since the initial days we got a lot of love from that country um in fact uh, i don't know if you've been to nepal but you know everyone who's seeing us i must tell that one of the countries beautiful country like you know kathmandu where we are pokhara is another place where we are not but such a beautiful place mm-hmm. um so i feel that you know uh, over time a lot of indian tourists who earlier would also feel concerned about here i'm going to nepal where am i going to stay how do i going to travel across the city all of those things will get resolved here but let's talk about the long term mm. our long term view is globally very few organizations have ever, ever understood this unbranded uh, ecosystem and tried to partner with them to create right. great quality experiences being south asia's largest hospitality company um uh, and probably the only company globally at the scale which is able to understand the unbranded partners and bring them into a brand ecosystem uh we will we it gives us bragging rights to give get us an opportunity uh, of to of impacting this globally over time right however india is a large market and probably one of our biggest focus areas will continue to be india over time right and uh, you've recently changed strategy from a marketplace model to becoming a full stack hotelier you've launched the oyo townhouse what was the thought process behind that and what is it that oyo townhouse offers so uh first off i think uh, the strategy was never from going from a marketplace to a full stack the strategy was here we have um, a large consumer base which 
comes to us in the thousand to two thousand rupees price point, which is a clean, comfortable experience. Even where we are reinvesting to continue to uh, make those assets more aspirational, right. um, and you know our consumers just love us, right? In in that one perspective. So, for example, there our customer NPS scores have increased by at least fifteen additional points in the last one year itself. Uh, so we continue to um, invest there and deliver uh, from a good experience to an exceptional experience. Mm -hmm. On the other side, with townhouse, uh, that experience is again truly different. It is um, the price points are also different. It starts yeah. from two thousand to two thousand five hundred, and goes up a thousand fifteen hundred more than that. All of our prices are inclusive of taxes, which is why these prices are all in. Yeah. The re in this price segment also. Uh, there are three big problems that exist, which is the same thing that existed in the budget segment, which is there either there are locations where mid-market brands are non-existent. So think about Kormangla in Bangalore, Kolaba in Mumbai, GK in New Delhi, yeah. or if they are present, they are prohibitively expensive. Think about Bikaji Kama in Delhi. Think yeah. about uh, Bandra Kurla complex, um, BKC area in Bombay, and yeah. so on. Our view was: How do we bring a mid-market or an upper-market brand experience in these areas for a price point that is off the unbranded hotels right. to ensure that customers uh, who want to spend thousand fifteen hundred more can get a remarkably better experience in great locations? Mm -hmm. So it goes back to a principle of location, quality, and price are in equilibrium that we always consistently aspire to reach. Right, and. Uh, Oyo has gone through several rounds of funding. Uh, for all the aspiring entrepreneurs out there who have no idea how to prepare for a funding round, would you like to share the experience of your first funding round? What is it that you felt? How did you prepare? And uh, what was that feeling once you were told that yes, this deal is through? Oh, so uh, you know, first time uh, I'd actually uh, given up hopes, right? Because I I I tried to reach out to so many people, and almost everyone said that um, ain't gonna happen. So I basically felt that you know, probably it's my background because I uh, don't come from one of the premier universities uh, or one of those things, which is the reason why I'm unable to raise capital. So I felt I'll build a business which makes money at the end of every month, and I will take that earnings and reinvest in the business. And probably that's I went to banks, I went to VCs, I went to angels, and so on and so forth. Um, so prob so so probably in the early days I wasn't I wasn't the best guy to fundraise. Um, the first time the first institutional round we have, uh, we had two rounds on both very unique experiences we had an angel round and then we had an institutional round uh, the angel round was actually uh, very special i'll talk about that as well but let me talk about the institutional round so at given up hopes we were running two hotels both hotels were making i think 35% margin at the end of every month mm -hmm. so we're making decent money which would afford our living and then whatever money we would save for 2 to 3 months we would invest in the third property that was our mission right, right. Uh, but then uh, and and we were parallel reaching out to most of the vcs and they had all mostly passed saying that you know not a very exciting situation but at one point of time suddenly um, on angel list which is a uh, uh, angel.co where you can go and apply for uh, funding from a lot of angels uh, one that and the second one um, I got this opportunity to speak to Lightspeed. Lightspeed was the first institutional um, investor. Mm. Uh, they do a lot of diligence before they invest. Yeah. So they came in, they saw the hotels, they met the hotel owners, they met some of our customers. Um, and I was like, all of this is good because I was getting to learn a lot from the questions they were asking us. Right. Because um, you know, a lot of these venture folks have uh, a lot of experience in asking a lot of these uh, questions. Yeah. Uh, at the end, uh, we get this call one day saying that uh, you know uh, we we want to really be partners with you guys, and you want to be partners for the very long term. Uh, so here's a financing opportunity. So they asked, how, what what is the amount you want to raise? So we did a lot of maths. Uh, it was me and Anuj who now Anuj heads our townhouse business now. Right. So our maths said 50 lakhs. I know we were scared saying 50 lakhs is a huge amount. So should we ask for it? So we. Uh, you know, asked for 50 lakhs by a lot, little bit of you know fumbling, and they were like, 50 lakhs is too small a check size for our size of fund. So um, here's our offer, uh, and we'd like to offer, and it was um, you know uh, a few crores uh, in capital. So uh, is it okay for you? So, uh, so uh, you know, the first question that came to my mind was, um, will we be able to? Uh, because you know, if a bank gives you 10% of return a year. This is high risk capital, so their expectation of return from us would be much higher as well. Of so course. initially, I was afraid. I felt if I raise this capital, how will I return it back? But I guess uh, we had a lot of conviction in ourselves. 
uh, we had um, a great belief um, in our partners and they had belief in us uh, at light speed mm -hmm. and we've been together since then uh, and you know uh, i'm i'm very happy to share that we've given we've given remarkable uh, returns at least um, uh, you know uh, on paper in the last couple of years and really hope that uh, the day they write the checks back uh, we would be very happy yeah yeah and uh, okay look at this lots of uh, viewers joining into the facebook live here um here's a question that we can take ranesh asks what are the three guiding principles of your life very good question i think um in the in the new generation uh, my parents actually um instituted uh, core values as i grew up and um, you know i think those have those are things that we generally tend to underestimate but are actually very valuable yeah uh, if i were to say three things the first one is making sure that uh, there are there are no shortcuts so think long term and no matter what you're building it will be built brick by brick mm -hmm. one example of that is when you use snapchat you generally believe that um you know it's just an app which takes your photo and puts a filter on top yeah whereas what it does is it has hundreds and thousands of images of faces which are manually being uploaded the app basically takes your picture is matching each point with one of those pictures and then puts a filter on top of it so to create that product it takes so much of hard work on the background which on the outside looks like just a simple stupid app <laughs> which which is actually which is actually such an intelligent piece of work so uh, you know remembering that shortcuts are not sustainable so not to take them uh, shortcuts can be a part of a long term plan but the long term plan is very important mm. the second thing uh, is doing business um, uh, or anything that you do uh, with a view of saying that uh it is it is being done the right way uh at and not right way from the perspective of all the ideas etc that are maintained right way from the perspective of your consumers mm -hmm. like are your consumers and partners exceptionally excited about it the last one which is the most interesting and the guiding principle of how i operate is remembering that the founder's main job is to bring some of the smartest people mm -hmm. and let them do what they do right So I actually do very less work at OYO, which is why I get the opportunity to come speak to you uh, and do a lot of these things. Because the people on the background who are exceptionally smart, who are putting all their life and hard work behind making OYO happen, building the right team, build, building important. exactly. So building the right team is possibly the most important thing. To recruit the first guy, I would have met like hundreds of people. By the way, at that point of time, I wasn't the chooser. I, I, like i i was convincing that somebody should choose to work with me yeah. uh and over time uh, of course today we have the opportunity to be able to still have some choice uh, albeit i can tell you some of the people that we really love uh, we go after them then uh, they coming to us so building the right team is uh, you know one of the most exceptional uh, principles that you should also have all right so here's another question um How was your plan of approaching a big venture of hospitality and management? Okay. I think we've already addressed that. Uh, here's Ritesh's question who says, how do you plan to counter the imminent competition arising from Airbnb's entry? Is Airbnb a direct uh, competitor to OYO? Oh, that's a very interesting one. Uh, so uh, you know in some way um, it's not a direct competitor but it's an indirect competitor because at the end of the day uh, think about this way. Um uh, you know you have a hotel uh, how do you think about your competition you think about your competition as an agent who will bring business to you because he's going to take some part of your share or there is someone else who's setting up a hotel right beside mm. we still don't know if airbnb is that agent who's going to bring business to us or is airbnb a competitor so in some way it's related but not a direct competition we actually believe they're doing uh, decently well but we have a we have a fundamental um, view behind the models that we both operate in Mm. uh we we believe the difference between both of us is that we essentially take charge of the quality of experience of the guest right. so if something goes wrong we are responsible and you can call us and we'll fix it for you um and if something goes right we take the pat on our back whereas airbnb which is um, an ownership or quality of experience controlled model airbnb has a light touch model which is i will ensure by means of my rating mechanisms that i tell you what is the right thing but if something goes wrong it's the owner who's responsible mm. which are both good models uh, we have just chosen uh, to be in the uh, controlled experience kind of a model right so you've been mostly in the budget market and you are looking at slightly uh, you know uh, one step 
ahead of budget uh, but are you also looking at luxury or bridge to luxury in the future so we fundamentally think of ourselves um, as being in the real estate and hospitality business which means you give us any square feet of land we should be able to use hospitality to give you the best return on that land space right. uh, it could be for budget uh, now we are launching now we recently launched with townhouse our um, upper mid market or it could be higher end luxury um, uh, all of these things are just ways of using hospitality to generate better uh, return per unit of land and we believe that our guests um, at every point of time deserve incredible quality in great locations at lowest prices right. uh, and this mission will continue across categories although our focus is primarily is in the budget and upper uh, mid market segment right. because both of these has such large population uh, we don't want to do anything which doesn't impact a large part of our country mm. um, and you know this is what would impact me uh, and a lot of our uh, consumers so we uh, we invest most of our time here right and here's another interesting one uh, how to attract the suave traveler to oyo to use oyo because in india the uh, the mindset is that you know the more expensive a property the quality is going to be greater yes, yes. so the cheaper yeah. the the rate yeah. uh, you know you tend to think that the quality is not going not to be good. so good okay. so um, i think to begin with there's a large uh, so uh, traveler which has already started coming to us so there are ceos of large companies there are vps of large companies who'd come to our properties and stay because if you are in kormangla in bangalore there is no other brand hotel so we, we are effectively the only option and then the guy comes here and he's like hey uh, when i need something in a hotel i would wait for 15 minutes here i can just climb down the stairs and ask the receptionist to fix it this is a much more uh, inclusive experience uh, and also youthy uh, in terms of kind so the way to get that so of traveler who's not here is uh, to wait for the day when the so of traveler who's coming to us talks to that guy right and uh, let's talk a little bit about the ecosystem the government has just um, enlarged the definition of startups yeah. benefits are going to flow for about 7 uh, years now so how is that playing out for oyo you must be very happy to hear that of course i think um, you know the government at least the first and the most important thing is while you know this benefit and sop is exceptionally helpful but more importantly it also defines that it's not as if uh, the government made a policy and is waiting on it they're consistently taking feedback saying that hey these are the few things that you have to get better and they come back and fix it so i feel that uh, that's a very important thing that the government of our country considers creating more entrepreneurs as one of the key priorities and which is already visible right uh, you know any sector everything from small towns and villages where entrepreneurs are impacting agriculture to high tech um, chemical industry and robots you're starting to see everywhere you know media uh, technology telecom everywhere there's a new upstart yeah. who's going out and saying that i'm going to do the same thing or a better thing for a cheaper price mm. it's great for customers but this innovation um, uh, for the first time will take us you know i mean this i must tell you a very interesting story a lot of people ask this question of hey look at china they've got so much capital how will our country or india compete with them yeah. if you think about um, europe and the us um, you right after civil war us had no money and europe was so rich 100 years out look at how us has made itself into such a powerful economy yeah. it's because of innovation mm -hmm. because the initial entrepreneurs of the us made railroads made standard oil made henry ford made cars and you know those things are massive work which has changed the world entirely right so i genuinely believe that if we continue innovating which all of these amazing startups and entrepreneurs will do whom we learn from every day will hopefully um, create a country that is truly remarkable over time yeah and uh, one of the uh, of course uh, things that's really going to change the game for all businesses is the gst that's around yes. the corner and uh, luxury hoteliers have been up in arms saying that you know the rate is too high Uh, but for budget hotels, uh, what's your feeling and what's your reaction to the rate? Uh, uh, around yeah. about twelve percent, uh, yeah. and of course, uh, anything under thousand rupees is not going to be uh, taxable at all. So, what's your reaction to the GST tax slabs? So, uh, first off, again, uh, you know, I'd like to share that I feel that the government is thinking about the masses makes me feel very good about it. Um, uh, there's there's a lot of Uh, there's a lot of um, focus and belief people would have uh, in terms of saying that how can we continue to bring prices down because of this kind of a slab structure we believe it is great for um, the broader masses of hotels 
because a lot of hotel owners who earlier had complicated taxes because of service tax, luxury tax and so on will come under the tax net mm. because they'll feel it is easy and it is fair percentage. So we believe it is going to be great uh, for the mid-market and budget hospitality. I, I, I do not understand luxury very well and hence would not be able to comment about what they think. Uh, but I feel that uh, with 80% revenues um, uh, or transactions in hoteliering in India happening in the unbranded segment, uh, this is at least for this 80%, it's a, it's a very fair decision uh, from the side of the government from our perspective. Right. And uh, talking a little more about tips for our aspiring entrepreneurs who are uh, watching this right now. Um, does getting funded really make you chase numbers and go down on innovation because there's a constant uh, worry on your mind, like you said, of returning the money and really giving that ROI to the investor. So uh, does it take away from your daily innovation and add, uh, add stress on a daily basis? So very good question. I think one of the things that um, you know, uh, I would like to share is that honestly, um, uh, raising capital should absolutely not be a priority. The priority should be chasing your mission. And I actually feel that uh, lives of a lot of people who haven't raised capital might be so much more easier than that of uh, mine. And, and, and it is absolutely fine. I actually know some incredible entrepreneurs who have never raised any funding and have built companies that are truly remarkable. On top of that, um, it is very important to remember never raise financing for the sake of financing mm -hmm. um, because your investors also won't like it. They're also investing in you because of your innovation, not because of your ability to reach numbers. Yeah. So as long as you have that in, uh, you know, understanding with your shareholders that you are here to build a very large impactful item in the next few years, which has good economics behind it where you actually make money. And it might happen one year out, it might happen a year and a half out, uh, but innovation and doing it the right way is one of your core priorities. I think it is just fine. All right. So here's Harsh Mishra who asks, uh, please ask how to really start from zero level. Uh, good, good question. <laughs> I think um, uh, there, there are two questions in this which I perceive. The first one is um, how do you start? The second one is when do you start? Mm -hmm. um, because ideas are bubbling in the minds of hundreds and thousands of people who are in college campuses, who are in companies and so on and so forth. Again, I must say, uh, you said tips. I, I don't understand enough to give tips. I'm still learning uh, in my own uh, right way. But from my perception, uh, the right time to choose doing something is when you're under the shower and you can't stop thinking about that one idea that's been on your mind for a long time. That's the time you should say that it's time for me to go do my own thing. How to start? I think effectively just go meet your customers. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're going to start an agriculture startup, go to the Mandi and talk to 10 people and go to 10 farmers. If you're going to start a hotel startup, go and meet 10 hoteliers. Uh, that's as easy as that. And I can tell you, an entrepreneurial mind will come up with 20 ways of solving the problem of the same people. All right. That's some uh, sound advice for you, Harsh. And uh, here's Sanjeev who asks, uh, how do you make the mediocre hotel with messy rooms, uh, how do you make them shine and good enough to be under the OYO brand? Because at the end of the day, they are your brand ambassadors, yes. right? So how do you really achieve that? So, um, you know, one of the things that we do, which is actually where, uh, you know, we've talked very less about, uh, which has been how we are able to transform these places. And over time, this is one of the core uh, understandings that we have that how to make terrible looking places really good. And it is not just showing it, there's actually a lot of things behind that happens. For example, wire insulations, um, you know, uh, flooring, ceiling, piping, and a lot of these things which are behind the walls. And OYO takes care of all uh, of these we, we ensure that them. right after signing, we spend 15 days to standardize the unit to these certain levels to ensure, which is why if you go on a website, and see pictures of all our hotels, they broadly look similar. The bedding is the same, the lighting is the same, the TV is the same. Mm. We get some of these things standardized to the extent that people really like it. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think uh, the investment to return here is so high that, it, that, that you don't bother a lot. All right. And uh, here's uh, Mr. Razak who asks, uh, do you have any plans to come to the Maldives since here the budget market is mainly for Indians and Asians? Uh, we love Maldives. Um, someday. Thank you so much, Mr. Razak, for <laughs> sharing this. All right. Um, any plans of landing in real estate? Uh, 
Uh, we we fundamentally believe that um, it, I, I assume that the question means that any plans of uh, starting to construct um, uh, buildings, uh, we we believe that um, we know a few things and we know them well, and we don't know a few things and we don't know that. Mm -hmm. So today we do not understand uh, greenfield construction. We only understand taking the units that exist and making them better. But uh, never say never. Hopefully mm -hmm. someday. All right. Here's Tarun Mahajan who asks, uh, there should also be something for backpackers having a hostel type property, that's the need of the hour in many places. And uh, the Indian traveler is really getting yeah. evolved today. Uh, Leh is becoming much yeah. more touristy yeah. than it was 10 years ago. You have backpackers, you have riders, bikers going to yeah. different locations. So any plans for that sort of a segment? So good news is a lot of them already use us. For example, Nepal started with us uh, actually having a bunch of bloggers, backpackers, etc. coming in and staying with us. Yeah. Um, although at this point of time, we've primarily been in the private room segment, uh, but over time, uh, we might exist in that segment. Although currently considering the market size is too small, uh, we're still in the wait and watch mode. Uh, but hopefully someday, you, don't, you never know. All right. Simranjit Singh says, uh, the journey from Oracle to Oyo was uh, ultimate, keep up the good work, India, Malaysia, Nepal, many more countries. Okay, good wishes for Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, here's another one from Mayang Gupta who asks, how can I know that the idea I'm working on is the right one? Because during the course of uh, the time, there will be many negative factors pulling you down. So did you yeah. experience that? Did a lot of people come and tell you that? Bad idea, don't put in so much also, money. Also, that's very important. So first important thing is you have to be naive. Uh, because, you know, in the hotel so it's industry... it's good to start young. Yeah, it's good to start... <laughs> fair enough. I think you can start at any point of time. You have to be just youthful in your mind. Uh, but I fundamentally believe that, um, you know, if you ask 10 people whether it's a good idea, like random people, then if 90% of them saying it's a bad idea, maybe a good idea. Uh, <laughs> Right, because in the hotel industry, nobody wanted to enter this. Right, like three years back, everyone told me that hotel industry is the last thing you want to do. Right, the second thing, which is uh, in the course of your journey, just ask your customers what do they think, whether your intentions and your way of thinking is the right thing for that industry or not. Mm -hmm. If majority of your customers are saying you're doing fine, just keep at it, but make these three changes, yeah. uh, you're doing absolutely right. All uh, right, they are your best judges. Okay, so. Here's another one um, which says Sunny Rai that, uh, and his question is, with fundings going low in the startup sector in India, how do you plan to scale up? How do you plan to take OYO to the next level because funding is now going to become a big hassle as the industry consolidates? So one of the things that I have learned is that if you're building a good company, capital will always be available. And if you're building a good company, you also don't need so much capital. Right. So I think at the end of the day, everything boils down to, um, are you building something absolutely right or not? Uh, you know, in the last 20 years, uh, when VCs did not exist in India five years back, even then great companies got built, right? Royal Enfield was built, Indigo was built. Um, so if you're building a good company, it might take time, it might go through downs and ups, uh, but, but the ultimate result will be there. We think about our business from a five year to a 50 year kind of a pipeline. Mm. And we believe that at that point of time, if we work hard and do everything well, we'll be successful. So what's uh, your five-year vision from now? I think, and your 50-year uh, vision? Uh, I think uh, uh, tough to articulate uh, <laughs> anything ahead of five years. I think uh, five years out, uh, we want to fundamentally have been able to, uh, the qualitative ambition is to upgrade the quality of living all of our fellow countrymen. I grew up in a middle-class household uh, where the quality of living was of a certain scale. I hope to be able to bring great quality of living to all my um, fellow countrymen but when they come in and stay at uh, a 2000 rupee hotel they should be able to get the same luxuries and benefits of what they expect in a 5000 rupee hotel uh, and, and we are very excited about uh, getting there over time. All right. So uh, before I let you go, we are going to do a quick rapid fire with you. You've got uh, to be really quick and think on your feet, which you do in business. But uh, let's see one. how you fare on this one. Let's see. <laughs> All right. So your biggest milestone. Oh, so th these are tough questions. <laughs> um, uh, the first hotel partner who signed up with us. Okay. Um, your favorite failure. Favorite failure is arrival. I think um, you know uh, if we if we did not learn from that, we would have never made a OYO. Okay. An unfulfilled dream. Unfulfilled dream is um, you know uh, to to basically see OYOs in uh, absolutely every country uh, that people would land in. 
um, and and you know uh, be able to show that signage. Not only myself, my entire team should be able to uh, at any point of time uh, point towards that signage and say uh, we are the people who've been able to enable this to come here. So it's an unfulfilled dream, but um, is is a long way out. All right, a leadership quality that you wish you had. I think uh, one of the things that um, you know I am working on, which I hopefully will get there, is being able to um, say no more often. Okay, all right, yeah, that's that's quite tough in business. Um, a business leader who inspires you? Oh, I'm I'm very inspired by Bill Gates, and and a lot, and you know, I know it's cliche because so many people say they're inspired by Bill Gates, but I'm genuinely inspired by him not just because he built a good business, uh, which touches our lives even today, but more than that, he's also like uh, had so many qualities of being a good human being. Right. Um, today globally his impact, like you know, uh, 100 years, 200 years out, uh, you'd still know who Bill Gates is because uh, he would have effectively removed few diseases mm-hmm. out of so many countries globally. Yeah. So I feel uh, that's an incredible thing that he's doing and, and I'm inspired by him uh, as an entrepreneur who's come in an entire circle uh, and, and has impacted the lives of so many people. Right. An idea whose time has come. I genuinely believe, this is a great question, I genuinely believe uh, that any sector where people have stu- have either taken customers for granted or uh, anything that um, you know people feel that the middle class can't afford, both of these things are ripe for any entrepreneur to disrupt in any category. Mm-hmm. So uh, everything from automobile, uh, mobiles, telecom, internet, everything, mm-hmm. two things. One if people consider they can take customers for granted or second if middle class um, you know uh, is made to feel like they can't afford it both of these sectors will one start taking care of the customers and second middle class will have access to everything uh, that the that the uh, you know upper class has today all right um, a profession you would have taken up if you weren't an entrepreneur Two things. As a young kid, I always wanted to become a pilot. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, not too late to do that, along with business. Yeah. Ho- hopefully, someday uh, I wanted to fly. So that's that's one. Uh, the other one is actually the second one is in the business. Only. So I think I think it would be flying. I I always wanted to uh, fly. Yeah. Okay. One word vision for Oyo. Uh, oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I think uh, it would be uh, upgrading quality of living. All right. And uh, your uh, a number that you're chasing today? I think uh, the one number I'm chasing is um, you know the happiness uh, percentage of uh, our guests and our partners because our view of the world is uh, you know uh, our Indian guests are actually among the toughest to solve for, which is the best thing because you started here. Um, uh, good news is from where we were, like you know what the unbranded budget industry was come a long way right. um, like you know we, we are able to invest in these properties we are able to train people on servicing uh, we operate on positive and negative feedback and depending on feedback we remove a hotel or keep it in the system uh, customers for the first time when they went to this unbranded units could not complain but today they have somebody to complain and if something goes wrong there's a guy standing there at the hotel to fix it we've come a long way but at the same time uh, as a consumer brand of our scale, mm-hmm. customers' expectations also increase every day, and and we really hope that we can uh, not only match but uh, supersede their expectations every day. So if they are happy, uh, we would have built a very good business. All right. So 100% is the number that you're chasing. Customers' happiness. Hopefully 110%. <laughs> <laughs> where some people call randomly and say that my friend told me that your service is very good. All right. Wonderful talking to you, Ritesh. Thank Thank you so so much much. for joining us. And uh, thank you to all our viewers who joined in and participated in the conversation with Ritesh today. And uh, keep following this page because Pulse the Venture will continue to bring you stalwarts of the Indian startup ecosystem. And don't forget to catch the series on Network 18. It's coming soon. Remember, the winner of Pulse the Venture walks away with one crore rupees of seed funding. Thanks for joining us. Goodbye.